Hey there, how's it going? My name's Chris Winter and welcome to part one of my Canon T6i and Canon T6s training tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you a number of basic steps on getting to know your new camera and hopefully you can get something out of it. Now this is only the first part of my training tutorial. Once you've seen this video, make sure to go and check out my other videos in the series to learn more. And I'd just like to say a big thanks to the guys over at Shutterhub for letting me rent out both of these cameras. And guys, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check out my top 10 list of the best lenses for the Canon T6i and T6s. I go into a lot of detail saying which lenses are good for you and why. So what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description box below. Go check that out at some point and tell me which lenses out of those you'd really like. But anyway, let's start off this training tutorial. Okay, so when you first get your camera, there's a very good chance that the lens won't be attached to it. It'll normally come in a box with either a kit lens or just the body alone, but many people do buy them with the kit lens. This one here is the 18 to 55 STM lens, a really nice lens with a very good autofocus motor. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is put the lens onto the camera. So the way to do this is to line up this little white dot here with the white dot here on your camera. So what you need to do is put it in, it's going to uh, fit in snugly like that, and then you want to twist it to the right until you hear it click. So we'll do that again. To release the lens, all you need to do is press this button here and at the same time, twist it to the left and it's come off. So let's do it again. White dot to white dot, twist, click, and there you go. Your lens is now on to your camera. So in order to save the pictures that we're going to take, we need an SD card. As you can see, I've got one here. The way to put this into the camera is simply by clicking that down and then opening that up. And then it goes in this way and you push it in. It's going to click in and as you can hear, it's clicked in. Once it's in, you can close it up and there it is. If we ever want to remove that SD card when we want to maybe put them onto the computer, what you do is press it in and it's going to click out. Then you can take it out. Just remember to put it in this way because if you put it in another way, it's actually not going to fit in and you can damage your SD card. So always put it in that way, click it in, and close it. So of course we need some power for this camera and the way that we use that is these new batteries. These are an LPE17 battery. It's pretty brand new for Canon. We used to have these LPE8 batteries on the older models and for things like the Canon 70D that I'm shooting now, we have these LPE6 batteries. So the way that we do this is you open it up by clicking this down and then the battery goes in this way. Pushes in, locks on, and then to close it, you simply do that. Again, to remove the battery, just pull that open, click this little switch, and there it goes. Always make sure that you've got these little gold, uh, gold pieces going in this way. You'll be able to uh, feel it if it doesn't go in because it won't go in that, the, the wrong way. All you need to do is close it up, and then, hopefully, we should have some battery. There we go. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this training tutorial, I'd love it if you leave a thumbs up because it takes a long time to make these videos and it's always appreciated. But anyway, let's learn a bit more about these two cameras. So let's now take a look at a few of the ports on this camera. So if we open this little rubber piece up here, you can see that we have a USB port. This is really useful if you want to take the images off your camera and put them onto your computer, or if you want to get a live preview using the EOS Utility app, which I'll go into more detail in another tutorial. We also have an HDMI uh, port this is really useful if you want to get your images up onto a, a TV or an HDTV or if you want to get an uncompressed uh, signal out of your camera for, uh, for pro video work. So we'll close that up. We also have a port for your microphone. This is what I use when I do my videos. Essentially what you can do is put a, a, a wireless lavalier or you could put a shotgun mic into here using this 3.5 millimeter jack. Essentially, you plug that in there and you're going to get a lot better audio than the actual audio that's recorded using the inbuilt mics. We also have a little slot here for a remote control or an intervalometer. So essentially, this is going to allow you to remotely use the camera using a little uh, plastic remote and you'll be able to use the shutter button and you'll be able to do time lapses simply by plugging that in there. It can be a really useful feature. So one of the benefits of these newer cameras is that they've got a flip out screen. So essentially, to flip this one out, you need to pull it out and then you can twist it so you can get a better angle, say, if you're going to be taking a shot from above or from below. This one here twists all the way forward, so if you're going to be doing some filming of yourself, which is what I use quite often, or it can go all the way back to around there. It can't go 360, so don't try and bend it too much, uh, too much otherwise you could break it. Now, a really useful thing of this is when you're traveling, 
right, you can actually close it so you've got a hard back here and the screen's not gonna be damaged when things bump against it. So if you wanna do that, you just need to close it like that. Again, if you wanna open, you can just flip it around and have it like that. It's a really useful thing having this flip screen and a lot of pro cameras don't have it and a lot of these prosumer cameras have it. So I actually really like it and I think it, they're a really good feature. So let's now turn the camera on. It's very easy, all you need to do is flick it to the on switch and then you'll notice that there's some information displayed on the screen and that means that it's on. From here, probably the first thing that you wanna do is actually take a photo. It's actually really easy. All you need to do is press this little button here. This is called the shutter button. You press it down and as you can hear, you've just taken your very first photo with your camera. So the next thing you probably wanna do is look at the image you just took and in order to do this, you press the playback button right here. And as you can see, this is the last image that I took. If you wanna to go to the next image, you can actually just swipe across, just like you would do on an iPhone or on a, any other kind of phone. You can also use these buttons right here to scroll across and see the different images that you've taken. And if we wanna zoom in on this shot so we can see if it's sharp or if it's in focus, you can press the little magnification button right here and zoom on in and see whether or not that was a good shot. If we wanna zoom out, you can actually just press this button here. And if we wanna get an, an overview of all the shots we've taken or move to them quite quickly, you keep on magnifying out and you can see that these are all the shots and videos that I've taken over the last few days. Now, something that you're probably gonna do quite often is actually deleting an image or a video. Sometimes we just don't take the perfect shot. So in order to do this, all you need to do is hit that playback button again and then select the one that you wanna delete. So this photo here, I wasn't really happy with it because it was a little bit out of focus. So I'm gonna press the trash can button down here. It's gonna ask me to erase it and there it's gone. So essentially, once you hit that erase button, it's pretty much gone. So make sure to do it only when you really wanna delete it. Okay, so we learned how to delete a single photo, but what if we wanna delete every photo off the card? Say you've taken a thousand photos and you've already put them on your computer, you're happy to delete them. What we're gonna do is now format the card. So to do this, you hit menu, and then you're gonna find the option that says format card. And what we're gonna do is click okay. You can see the amount of space that will be left on your card. I've only used 46 megabytes right now of my 29 gigabyte card. But to do this, we're gonna click okay. Once it's done, it's done. And there you go, we're gonna have a clean card now, so we'll be able to have all the space available on the card, ready to take more photos. So let's quickly talk about the lens on this camera. This one here is the 18 to 55 millimeter STM lens. It's a relatively basic lens, but it is quite sharp, and it's a really good beginner lens. Now in order to zoom this lens, you can see that we're currently at 18 millimeters. If we twist this to the left, you can see that it's moving in and out, and we're now at 55 millimeters, which means it's zoomed in more. If I wanna put this in autofocus, all I need to do is click the autofocus button. If I wanna put it in manual focus, I click the manual focus button. Once it's in manual focus, I can actually adjust the focus by simply spinning this manual focus ring right here. Now, there are some lenses like this one here. This is a Sigma 30 millimeter, which is actually a prime lens, which means it doesn't zoom. Now, why would we wanna use this? Well, I'll go into this in a little bit more, in a little bit more detail later on, but essentially these can be a little bit sharper. You can get some really nice images from them. But when you're traveling or when you're starting out, it can be a really nice idea to have this zoom lens like this 18 to 55. It's also got a stabilizer uh, button right here. This essentially is gonna reduce the camera shake uh, when you're taking photos or, or if you're recording video. To turn this on, you can turn this on like that, or to turn it off, you can turn it off like that. I like to keep it on pretty much most of the time. Now next up, what we're gonna do is hit the menu button. Here we're gonna be able to change a lot of different settings that we've got on the camera. For instance, we can change the image quality, so we could have a large image, or we could have a smaller image if we wanna save some space. You can turn on the beep, you can turn on whether or not you're gonna have the image review for two seconds or 10 seconds. And if we go to the right here, you can see that there's a lot of different things you can change. You can change the picture style. So if you wanna have it in monochrome, so which means black and white, or if you wanna just make it your colors pop a little bit more. Again, there's lots of different things that you can change here. And I'll make a full video on the menu settings. So make sure to check that out on my channel. Now up the top here, we have our different modes. This is where you can change the different settings for different kinds of photos that you wanna take. Say if you wanna take a portrait, we have portrait modes. A macro photo, we've got macro modes, or if you wanna get into the manual modes, we have manual 
aperture priority mode, shutter priority mode, and program mode. What I'm gonna do is leave this to another video, probably in part two, just so that we can go over this in more detail. But as you can see up here, these are your mode dials. So there you go guys, that was the end of part one of this Canon T6i and T6S training tutorial. If you liked it, make sure to leave a thumbs up. And now if you wanna, you can check out part two right here where we go a little bit more in depth about how to use these cameras. It's definitely worth checking out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next video.